Hey guys, I'm Kithu Cat 3 and today I want to show you how to add animations or animated pictures uh, or objects into real pictures taken um, either by phone, camera, whatever, just any other picture that you may have. Uh, so the project download will be in the description just in case any of you guys are just like brain farting and just can't get it. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but with that said, I just want to say this doesn't include any plugins. It's really simple and anybody could do it. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I have decided to use a beautiful picture of um, a field, just because. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start. So we want to prepare ourselves with our needed objects. I will give myself a background, a physical sky, and a plane. You can use more than one plane, just depends on how creative you want to get with it. Um, you'll see why once you start playing around why we need our plane and what different planes can do. But I'm starting off with one, and I'm going to scale it outwards. And for the record, E is to move, R is to rotate, and T is to scale, and I will just do that for now. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our materials ready. So I'm going to create two different materials. And uh, you could create as many, just depending on what you actually want to happen. But um, one is for my text, and one is actually just for the background, the picture that I'm going to be using. So you can rename them if you'd like, but I will remember uh, what I'm going to do. So double click, just take off specular. Um, I mean, if you want it, go ahead. I'm not sure why you would want it, but it's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the picture that I have. Um, it's a beautiful polo field, if you know what I mean. No, just kidding. So apply that to our background and our plane. You could drag and drop here in the objects tab or actually just on to the actual plane. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start um, editing things now. So I'm going to go ahead to physical sky. And I like to drag that to the top because it's normally the first thing I work on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, cinema 40 tags after right clicking and compositing. And what we're going to do is we're going to check off seen by camera so that we don't actually see the sky we just want the lighting and the shadows that it will cast so now what we're gonna do is as you can see if we take out our plane this background is very how do I say uh, small so I'm gonna go ahead to my render settings and change this up a bit I'm gonna go 1920 by 1080 depending on how that looks you can always change it uh, if you have an originally small picture um, you can obviously make the ratio, I guess, um, smaller, whatever f suits you, because for some pictures that aren't very high quality, of course, it makes it a little bit more pixelated. I'll render it out just to see it, and it looks, it looks fine. I mean, it's not a very high quality picture, but it works. So I'm going to go ahead and put my plane back, and as you can see, uh, this plane is kind of just floating around here, and what we want it to do is blend it with the background. So no matter where we turn it, this picture, this plane will like be part of the background I guess you could say so cinema 40 tags and compositing compositing background and what that will do is I don't know what that will do but we have to go to uh, this texture click on it and from UV mapping on projection we want it to be frontal so whichever way we turn it it um, kind of stays the right way actually you know what I know what the compositing does it makes it the same shade as the background, so that's why we want to have compositing. Because if we had uh, compositing off, we would have a dark line, and you would see where the plane starts and where the background starts, and that's not what we want. So, compositing, and as you can see, compositing background is checked off, and we render, and everything is beautiful. So, doesn't matter which way you turn this plane now, it will always bend, blend in with the background, and that's what we want, just because we are going to put in our text or our objects. This will work perfectly with either one. Uh, extruded splines, nerves, whatever. It will work. Uh, so, the reason why, I'm just going to explain this, the reasoning behind the plane is so that there is something to uh, project your shadows onto so that you do not just have text floating around in midair for no apparent reason. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to make my MoGraph MoText. MoGraph MoText is the bay for any of you who didn't know already. Uh, so for text I'm going to go ahead and just keep it that way. 
I don't really know what font I'm going to use, so I guess I'm just going to use this font because it's funny, I guess. Uh, for like backgrounds or pictures with a lot of space in them, I, I like to use um, a higher depth, maybe a 70, which I'm using right now. Subdivision doesn't really matter to me, although I am going to go with 20 this time, just because. Um, I will go ahead and move my text up with E right away. i got to make sure that it's really sitting on the plane. Uh, you can check this with, uh, what is this called, front view. Uh, you could see where it's sitting and if it's actually, you know, sitting well. And you can make the text editable after. I'll show you how to do that if you want to separately move each uh, each letter, like I'll have to do here, because the T is actually in the E, so that's not what we want. I'm going to go ahead and make my material for the text now. And I'm just thinking of a, a white. I just feel like that will blend in the best. Specular, go away, kill yourself, no one likes you. Um, we're going to go ahead with reflection, just because I feel like it. Lower than 50%, definitely. I'm not really too sure about your 50% and 60s. I don't know how it'll work. So I'm with uh, about 25% right now. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag that on there. I'm going to tilt it. And it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned right now. You just want to see how it works with the photo. So as we can see, it's it's there. <laughs> Nothing really to say about that. I'm going to move it over a little bit. I don't want it too much on the path. Although, yeah. Now, if the sunlight or the light um, is coming in from a different angle in your case, uh, you can go ahead to physical sky and time and location. You may change it to however you want. Actually, yeah, I think it's time and location. It's just that my Cinema 4D isn't responding, so it's not changing. Stupid Cinema 4D. Um, but yeah, you could go ahead and change the time so that the sun is actually pointing in a different place in the sky. Um, but I'm not going to fix that because I am happy with what I'm with because the sun seems to be coming from every direction, sort of, I guess. Um, and as you can see, these little uh, shadows here are kind of staying in place, so I feel like it's noon. Um, but anyways, that's that. I can go ahead and put my text down a little bit more, or you can make your plane go higher, it's up to you. Uh, as long as your text looks like it's actually sitting down, that is really bad. I think it's better if I just edit it right here. So what I'm going to do is, now that I pretty much have everything done, apart from render settings, I'm going to go ahead and individually change the letters. So I'm going to go ahead and once you got to do this once you have all of your materials on and you like the color because then it's just going to be harder to edit if you haven't finished everything. So right click, make editable, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and move my text actually over because I feel that the letters are cramped. It's not a good thing. Um, so I think that's enough space, although the E is, um, okay, it's, it was just kind of floating out there. Uh, I'm going to move down my X so that it hits the ground, and my T as well. Move it over a little, and I believe I believe we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and render it in screen. By the way, guys, if you don't want to keep pressing this button and waiting for it to finish, uh, Interactive Render Region is your best friend. So just pop that over there and check out how everything's doing. So what I see now is that my shadows are like fairly dark. I'm not going to lie. Um, now, we want to change that after we've changed our render settings just in case some of the effects that we add do end up fixing it. So I'm going to go ahead and add some ambient occlusion and I will render it to see if it really changes much. It does make it look a little bit better, I will admit that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead, I, I like to add global illumination, uh, but this time I'm going to add glow. And that's just going to, if you guys have used it before, I'll, I'll show you what it does. So it renders out the whole picture and then it adds a glow over top. And I feel like it kind of blends in the colors a little bit more because there is an overlay of brightness over top of the actual picture. Um, although you might want to change it because this could be too bright for you. It, yeah, I don't know. So obviously it's too bright for me. I'm just not going to use it. <laughs> Sorry, glow. 
Uh, but anyways, uh, global illumination might be something you want, but before we go to that, I'm going to change anti-aliasing from geometry, going to go to best, because, you know, just because it's the best, right? So, we will look at how that turns out, if we like it. And, to be honest, it's not perfect, but I, th I think we like it. We, I mean, uh, like me, but I don't care about what you, th what you think. Uh, I like it. So, anyways, I don't really have to see the full thing. I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit more reflection to that. I feel like it could use it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, global illumination now, just because. Now, this is where everything starts to take longer, just in case you didn't know. Uh, global illumination will take uh, a lot longer to render just because it's a little bit more precise with the actual lighting. So this has changed my shadow and it has made it lighter, a little bit more realistic to be honest. So this is what you want to see. Um, this is great. I just like it the way it is for something I've done in about three minutes. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And once this renders out, I'll just stop the video. But uh, I will basically have everything in a zip for you guys to download and check out yourself so that you can end up editing it on your own if you're just, like like I said at the beginning of the video, brain farting and you can't because you just can't. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you guys in another tutorial. Um, this was requested, although I'm not exactly sure who. I probably should have screenshotted it, but I guess I didn't. So anyways, that's pretty much it, and I hope this helped, because it is fairly simple, and it is also very useful, and I think things like that are great. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!